solutions. And I know we've sat and thought about it for a long time. Well, I want to not participate. I want to live my life and be productive and have a healthy family. And I want to teach my children the right way. And I want to ignore these criminals as much as I can. They're in my face, but I want to ignore them as much as I can. That's the, that's really the important thing because when I talk to a lot of people, they're so consumed by this that they can't live their lives. And I say, gosh, you got to live your life first. You got to have a plan. What are you doing next year? What what are you investing in? What what clubs are you involved in? Get and in, do those things. Build your life. Take care of your health. And yeah, okay. Now what? How do we how do we deal with these people? Just stop participating. Well, first we um, don't let them yeah. destroy us personally. So let's take right. care of our families. Let's mm -hmm. take care of our health. Let's do the things we need to to right. be healthy individuals. Because the last thing we should give these a hold is our own health and sanity. So take care of yourself and your children. Right. And then past that, what can we do to move on and say we are not going to support this activity? Okay, there's two things, pretty big things, and maybe we could do an additional discussion because it's quite lengthy. But one thing I'm I'm working on right now is I'm putting together a, a little structure known as a private membership association. It's a business structure. You can use it for your family or business. And I'll tell you real quick, um, the, the way this works is a family is already a private membership association. So people don't, people have not heard this. You're not going to hear this from an attorney, but a private membership association is a legal structure that identifies a group that has something in common. So a family, of course, has something in common. The reason why Child Protective Services is able to get children is because they're they're breaking into this private membership association on a presumption that there's something substantively evil going on. But because the parents don't understand what, this going, what they're doing, they don't know how to defend it. So they're talking about what the court or the judges and the CPS people want to talk about, but they're not talking about the fact that there's nothing substantively evil going on in the family. And the court just acts on that presumption and then all disaster happens, right? So once people start understanding that their family is already a private membership association, I'll give an example. A friend of mine calls me from Atlanta. They come over to his office. He just gets a lease for the first week. The city's already over there saying, you have to pay us this tax, which is like 150 bucks or something. He had another two weeks to pay it. He just hadn't gotten around to doing it. And they said, no, you have to pay it now. I mean, they were like thugs. So he called me on the phone. I did some research. And I found out that if we restructure his business and his lease agreement and use a private membership association, and we put that on the door, put the name of his company and then put private membership association underneath, they will leave him alone because it's outside the purview because it doesn't have to do with the public interest. So the state taxing authorities, the cities and the whomever can't come in and tell you what to do unless you're starting a campfire in the middle of your office or your house or something, right? Unless you're, you're creating danger for others around you. Exactly. So you have, but you have to use a private membership association. There are articles you have to write up. There are certain things you want to put in there and you don't have to publish it. You don't register it with the state. Um, I recommend publishing the name of it, though, in a legal notice journal, like a local business paper or something like that. So that's what that's one thing you can do when I say not, not participate. This is a tool where you can not participate and you can do your same things you like doing. Well, what happens about a child that truly is being abused, sexually abused in a family? The, the and there truly the right is to, evil yeah. stuff going on. So they can still breach yeah. that if Absolutely. it truly is something evil going on. It is a police power, yes. Okay. And they so will. That's, yeah. that's good. We want that. Yep. But I want that too, yeah. Yeah, but we don't want them going in and taking your kid from a, uh, which they do. They take it from single mothers and people who are quite defenseless, and they're taking these children to be trafficked. We had that situation come up here in Florida. We were at a private school way, way back 10 years ago, and my, our pediatrician had, my, my son had little bumps on his skin, and a pediatrician told us to put duct tape on it. So before he went to school, he put the duct tape on there and it was dissolving the bumps and it cured it. But in the meantime, he was scratching it. Now he was three years old and we, there was a sub teacher in his class that day. And the sub is just, they're so overreactive and, and they're so scared of having any liability. So the sub told the director of the school, the director of the school called Child Protective Services. They came out to the school and took all my children, all three out of the class and photographed them and made them take their clothes off and all this crazy stuff like, that's even worse than anything, right? So they didn't tell me that they were doing this. And I found out later and I interviewed my children and then they told me after school and I was so angry. And I went and um, I, uh, I, I went 
and I filed a claim against all my children. And I went to the school and I explained, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to prosecute this claim. If you don't leave my children alone and leave my family alone, there's no wrongdoing here. It was for $28 million. And, uh, they backed off and they said, we are so sorry. And I did some research and I found out that, um, only 5% of the cases of the referrals are anything worth investigating 5%. And they knew that. And I think that was enough. I think that the fact that I was going to oppose them was enough. I didn't go in there and beg for mercy. I just said, Hey, look, you don't have the right to do these things. And if you, if you proceed, it's going to cost you $28 million. And this resulted in the school, both locations being shut down. I didn't, I didn't intend for that to happen, but this shut down the school that had to leave and go back to California. Wow. That's incredible. Well, there yeah. are situations I know in our state where kids have been referred to child protective services 16 times and they never check into them and yeah. the kids have been killed, you know? And so yeah. we have two, two fold problems. It's just incompetency all around is what it is. In incompetency and there was incompetence. incompetence. I mean, it was so obvious. That's why, I, and, and that's why I was angry because it was clear incompetence. And if, it, if there was any question that I had, done something wrong like beat them or something then you know i'm gonna i'm gonna probably gonna get an attorney right <laughs> you know and try to make a deal with them or something well but, but also they didn't yeah. find any bruises there was just some bumps in it and then all you have to do is explain my doctor well, told and what the hell are you doing yeah and that's and why should why didn't they call me first and see that's the policy the policy is don't call the parents call the police first mm -hmm. and that's what, what's going what did on. they so, find why would the duct tape on on a kid's thing even he was scratching it he was scratching it and then the teacher asked what the problem was and he showed this his skin it was on his stomach and then she got scared because she saw duct tape you know silver tape on the skin so she thought that was something cr like we were crazy or something instead of calling us <laughs> hey, what's going on here kid? they couldn't just call us so then we actually had we left that school and then we went well, to another school that was yeah i mean and, and then the next school uh we had actually had a separate contract than the service agreement i made them sign a different contract that said look if you get a situation like this call me first and they agreed to it. It was a good school. But now, now I homeschool them. I'm not even going to get into that. That's my, another way of not participating is if you can do it, homeschool. Well, if you can yeah. do it. If you uh, can do it. And that's the problem. I'm not sure if I could do it. 